Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm Dario. Uh, this talk is titled Hot Reloading in React, what they did not tell you. The purpose of this, of this talk is to give you an idea of how it works, uh, Hot Reloading in React, uh, when it works, and more importantly, when it doesn't work. Uh, in my experience, uh, sometimes it can be quite frustrating or confusing uh, to, see, to see errors pop up uh, when you uh, uh, implement Hot Reloading in React. And I just want to give you a little bit of an insight on uh, possible issues and how to avoid those, uh, those issues. Uh, so let me start with introducing myself. I'm a full stack engineer at Suver. That's mostly on paper though. Uh, I mostly do front end stuff. I've been doing front end stuff for roughly 10 years now. Um, I have a lot of opinions. Uh, I'll give them for free. Uh, Suver pays me to give them. And uh, I'm here because Robert asked me to do this talk. Robert is also my manager. Uh, so thanks for the invitation, Robert. Uh, so this talk, uh, yeah, it's about hot reloading, which is uh, a magical, amazing concept in theory. However, it turns out that it's maybe a little less amazing in practice. Uh, again, it can sometimes be a quite a confusing, uh, yeah, quite a confusing thing. Uh, I often see people use it, and then a couple months in, they decide, it's not worth the effort, it's actually slowing me down. Uh, so before we start, I would like to get a little bit an, I an idea how you all feel about hot reloading. So f the, f the first one is, uh, who of you have never bothered to set it up or never had the time or anything like that? Can I see some hands? Okay, so most of you have worked with it. How about the people that use it but refresh anyway all of the time? Yeah, figured as much. How about the people who've actually like turned it off because it started to annoy them? <laughs> Still, okay. Uh, and how about the people who are infallible magicians and have it working all of the time? <laughs> no one, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, we, have, we have a liar. Okay, we have a liar. <laughs> all right, so yeah, first maybe explain what hot reloading is. So th this tweet uh, is pretty, yeah, it's a pretty historical tweet. It's uh, by Dan Abramov, the original creator of React Outloader. It's over three years old now. It basically says, check this out, I'm live editing a React app without refreshing. So that's it. Uh, now seriously though, uh, the idea of hot reloading is the, the ability to replace code in a system without actually shutting the system down or restarting it. And in the context of a, of a web app, which is what we're talking uh, about today, it means the ability to re-render your application without actually having to do that full page refresh. And what it means in the context of a React application is that you will have the ability to re-render the application without losing local state. Why do we want a re reloading? Well, the main thing is, is faster feedback. Uh, you can go from a uh, normal development process where you have feedback from anywhere between three to four seconds, maybe even more, to get a feedback in like half a second. Uh, that keeps you focused. Uh, for me personally, if things take longer than three to four seconds, I lose focus, like I look at my phone, I look at a different tab, and things that should take me like a couple seconds will end up taking me a minute. So it definitely helps to see the changes almost immediately on your screen. And another thing is that we're able to maintain state. If you have something that you're, uh, that you're testing on that uh, requires you to do uh, an amount of user interactions, for instance, you're testing a form or you're styling a form or whatever, uh, it can be quite cumbersome to have to deal with the fact that for every change you make, the browser will have to do a full page refresh and you will have to repeat those actions. Uh, yeah, I can slow you down and um, that's not what we want. So what we want is productivity. Uh, as far as the building blocks for getting hot reloading to work in React, uh, one of the things is Webpack, which is a code bundler that probably most of us use and definitely most of us complain about. Then we have uh, Babel, which is a JavaScript compiler. Uh, it's mostly used for compiling uh, newer features of JavaScript into a subset of JavaScript that is supported by older browsers. Uh, and we also have React Outloader, which is the library itself, of course. As far as Webpack, well, yeah, just a basic introduction. Webpack bundles your code. Uh, that means it collects all your, your JavaScript files and uh, emits one file that you can uh, ship to your users. Uh, it also has a watch mode, 
where uh, files are being watched for changes, and on every change, it will emit a new version of your, uh, of your bundle. And it also has something that they call the hot module replacement mode. Now, I wanted to do a really thorough uh, explanation of what hot module reloading exac uh, exactly is, but it's actually a quite a simple graph on the old Webpack website that explains precisely what it does, and that's this. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I could look at this for two years and I still would not understand what this means. But I did the work, so I'm going to try to explain it a bit. Um, so the way that it works is when you enable hot module replacement for Webpack, is it includes a small piece of code that um, when your browser executes it, it will open a WebSocket connection to the Webpack process. When Webpack sees a change coming in, it will actually send just the changed modules to the browser and the updates will uh, be received by the browser. They bubble up in the sense that um, if you have module A that imports module B, if you don't accept it in module B, it will bubble up to uh, module A. And if no one accepts the update, the browser will do a full page refresh. And this is basically how it looks. Uh, check for the existence of the, uh, of the hot module replacement API in the module object tell Webpack to accept updates for the app folder, and then in this case, uh, we refresh the browser, which is obviously something that we want to avoid, but just to give you an idea of, uh, of the concept of accepting hot updates. Uh, then we have Babel, which is, again, yeah, mostly used for compiling newer JavaScript into older JavaScript, so to speak. Uh, it's actually much more than that, though. Uh, it has a plugin architecture that uh, yeah, allows you to do basically everything you want with any JavaScript file. It will allow you to, uh, to edit, uh, uh, to make changes, to add code, to remove code, etc. It's like super extendable. So just to give you an idea of uh, what's possible with Babel, there's this uh, plugin. I'm gonna just going to read it out loud. It's Babel plugin transform React pure class of function. If you're not familiar with the Babel plugin ecosystem, yeah, it seems like it's sort of a sport to come up with the, uh, the longest names, and this is definitely a contender. But the idea of this plugin is uh, to uh, traverse your, uh, your module, uh, try to see if, if, if it can find a, a class component that only has a render function, and then it will change that, uh, that class to a functional component. I'm not sure what the exact uh, idea behind it. Could be something like file size, could be something like uh, performance. But just to give you an idea of uh, what's possible uh, beyond just uh, compiling new to old. And as for React Hot Loader, uh, the library itself, yeah, it was originally written by Dan Abramov a couple years ago. And I think, yeah, some other people took it over now and they just released the third version. Uh, version two and version one were even worse. Uh, the slogan is tweak components in real time. And I think it's very significant that they say tweak. Like they don't say change, they don't say do a big refactor. If the scope of your change is like small, you'll be fine. But yeah, anything else than that, yeah, th you'll have some issues. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, so what the library does is it will help us re-render the UI after an update, and it will make sure that the latest version of your component is actually rendered. It also help us, helps us uh, keep local state. Uh, it comes with a Babel plugin, which I will explain in a minute. It comes with a small runtime that you have to include in your, uh, in your code. There's also a use case without Babel, uh, with just Webpack, but that's so limited, yeah, it's not even worth discussing. Uh, so this is how it looks, this is how a basic React hot loader setup uh, looks. So obviously we have the, uh, the basic React uh, tools to render the application, and then we import the app container, and we create a render function to uh, render the actual application. And as you can see on line seven, we actually require the module over there. And that's pretty important, and I'll get back to that in a minute. And the last thing that we need to do is, yeah, we need to accept the, um, the hot update for the app component, and then we render the application when an update comes in. And another, uh, another part of React Hot Loader is the Babel plugin that they provide. The goal of the Babel plugin uh, from React Hot Loader is to basically find every component that it can find inside of your code base. Uh, so the way that it does it is it traverses your modules, it finds all the top level variables. So for instance, here we uh, declare the foo and the bar component, 
and React Hot Loader will add a small piece of code that registers those components uh, with their ID and their file name with the runtime. And the next step is, uh, probably the most complex part, is the hot, lo hot loader runtime. Uh, so you have to include a small piece of code inside of your application. Uh, it has a component registry. Again, it has those uh, components matched by file name and ID. Whenever a module is executed, the components will register with the runtime. At that point, the, uh, the hot loader runtime will create a proxy version of that component. So it's not actually the component, but it's, uh, it's something that proxies to the component. And this proxy, it can update a component type without unmounting the component. What normally would happen inside of a React application, uh, the way that React works is when it sees two different types and it checks that by identity, it will unmount the component. But the proxy component makes sure that the identity is preserved of the earlier version and you will be able to update the class of a component without causing an unmount, which helps us uh, maintain local state. And last thing that it does is it overrides create, uh, create element, uh, which is a React function. If you don't know what that is, it's basically something that you call every time that you write JSX. There's actually just a react, react element call, and it will return the proxy for, uh, for a type if it has that type in its registry. And as far as handling the update, so first off, Webpack will send that update to the browser. The app will accept that update. It will re-require the module to make sure that the module is executed and the component is re-registered. And when the component is re-registered, the proxy component will be updated with the new version. And when the, next, the next time when the application is rendered, which is something that App Container takes care of, uh, we will render the new, ver the new version of the component. And then, it works. It's magic. You feel amazing, you feel productive, you feel the best developer in the world, but all of a sudden you notice that something is wrong, like something's missing, like I didn't expect this. And you open up the console and you see all kinds of red errors. And I'll just refresh just to be sure. <laughs> so what does not work about in React Hot Reloading? The first thing that doesn't work uh, is async error functions. Async error f an async error function is a class property, just like any other error function. And the Babel plugin does some weird stuff with, uh, with class properties. Uh, that has something to do with uh, the way that React Proxy works. But in any case, the end result is that it's not reloadable. It's ignored. If you update an async error function, you won't see that change in your browser if you refresh the page. And you can, well, you can sort of see it over here. Uh, we have a foo function that is an error function. It references a class method, and then you have an async error function that is actually left alone. So it, React will never see the update. Another thing that doesn't work, so <laughs> apologies, uh, is code splitting. So for those of you who are not aware of what code splitting is, code splitting is basically uh, a way to split up your uh, JavaScript file into smaller files. Like especially if you work on a larger application, if yeah, you can easily ship like a JavaScript file that's larger than one megabyte. At that point, you'll have to use code splitting uh, to split it up in smaller files. And Webpack will load those files for you on demand. Uh, the problem though with code splitting is that the updates will only bubble up to the split point. Uh, so if I define a split point in module B for module C, and I import module B in module A, I hope you can still uh, <laughs> keep track, but the, the update is never gets to uh, module A, and we don't know how to re-render. Uh, and just to give you an example, this is how code splitting looks, uh, looks in the context of a, a React application. Uh, we're using a helper library here, which is React loadable, uh, to, cr to create um, uh, a lazily loaded component. And the important part is on line five, where we have the dynamic import statement that imports the module on demand. There are ways around this. There are ways to deal with it. Uh, what I see people doing quite often is to add synchronous require statements in development mode uh, for, the, for the modules that they have code split. Uh, that makes it work, like that tricks Webpack into thinking that's one big chunk and the update will bubble up correctly and you will know how to re-render. And the other thing is that we did at Suver is we wrote a Babel plugin that actually adds a regular import every time that it sees a dynamic import, again in development mode. Uh, sorry, I deleted the code. Uh, anyway, um, let me go back. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, th so this basically uh, just replaces um, uh, dynamic imports with an immediately resolved promise that is the, the, uh, the result of the uh, static import. Uh, another thing that is really hard to get right, and it makes sense that it's hard to get right, is lifecycle methods. So you have lifecycle methods like component will mount, component dip mount, the constructor. They are obviously not called if a component stays mounted. Uh, so if you change anything within uh, a render method that depends on changes in the constructor or component will mount or como component dip mount, like that could break your render method because the, the lifecycle methods are never called. And the only way out here is to refresh, like there's no way around it. If you want to keep local state, you won't have the updates in your, uh, your lifecycle methods. Uh, another thing that uh, breaks quite easily is functional composition. Functional composition, or also known as higher order components, is basically a function that returns uh, a component that renders another component. Uh, it's a pattern that's commonly used in Redux, React Router, Relay. Like the prime example is the connect function from React Redux. Uh, the problem is uh, with it though is that it hides components from React Hot Loader. React Hot Loader can only see the top level variables in your module. And if you have uh, multiple layers of composition, then React Hot Loader can no longer see uh, certain components and it will cause uh, issues. Uh, so here we have an example. So we have the full component and then we have the connected component with two layers of composition, which is the connect function and the with router decorator, which you might know from React Router. So what happens uh, in the output is that you can see that there are only two components being registered with React Hot Loader because it's not able to tell that the argument that you pass to the connect function is a component as well. And the effect that that will have is that the component will be unmounted and remounted uh, when you re-render the application because uh, the hot loader runtime does not have a reference uh, to this component. Uh, the way that you can work around this is you can, of course, you can declare a top level variable for every uh, phase in your composition. Uh, yeah, that requires you to update your uh, your modules to to actually make that work. Of course, there's also a plugin I uh, I, I found out a couple of days ago. It's called Extract Dash Hoc. Uh, it basically does the same thing we just described, but then automatically. And this is how it looks. Uh, if we go back to the previous example where we declared one component and two layers of composition, you'll see that it actually uh, declares two different exports for uh, both phases of that composition. And this definitely helps with uh, making sure that functional components maintain state as well. Uh, and some other tips. Uh, the first thing is uh, make sure that the errors that you get are visible. So when the application we renders, catch that error and do something with it. Like it doesn't, doesn't really matter what, either refresh it or you can add a component like Redbox which overlays a big um, a big red layover with the stack trace, but at least make it visible to uh, keep you aware of the fact that something has gone wrong. But another thing is functional components are your best option. Like if you change a functional component, like there are no edge cases, it will just almost always work. Um, also, hot reloading is great for style guides. Like at, at Suver, we use style guides, but I think there's, you can f use things like Storybook as well. Uh, just a focused environment where you only have uh, yeah, logicless components, like just dumb components. Uh, in, in that context, it works, works great. If you want to add uh, state and logic, you just do it in the context of your application. But at least you can do then do the starting changes within the context of your, uh, of your style environment. And last thing is avoid hot reloading as a whole. Uh, for some people, it might not make sense to, to uh, use hot reloading if you don't have server-side rendering, if you have a fast rebuild, if you have a fast reload, uh, yeah, you might just want to avoid it because if you can get uh, consistent feedback within one second, you'll still be fine and you might not need it. And I think that's it. Uh, do we have time for questions?